was a lot of fun, but we better get to business. We're going to take what we learned in the previous chapter and we're going to take the angles and apply theorems that only work if we have parallel lines. So let's start with the corresponding angles theorem. If parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. So in this diagram here, angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding angles. If lines are parallel, they are always congruent. Angle 2 and angle 6 are also corresponding angles. And just to help you out with this, I traced angle 2 so we can just do a visual representation to show that these angles are congruent. So if we just copy and paste this and move it down to angle 6, you can clearly see that they're congruent. If you forget, just take a step back and actually look at the angles. They look congruent. Well, they are. And another example would be angle 3 and angle 7. And then the last pair of corresponding angles are angle 4 and angle 8. And again, all of these pairs that we are looking at are congruent if we have parallel lines. Oh, I love this picture. I took this at the track. Look, even the track has the parallel line arrow symbols. Love it. And yes, those are my feet in the picture. Anyway, alternate interior angles theorem says that if we have parallel lines cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are always congruent. So in this diagram here, angle 4 and angle 6 are our alternate interior angles. If lines are parallel, they are congruent. Angle 3 and angle 5 are also alternate interior angles. And again, if lines are parallel, they are also congruent. In the alternate exterior angles theorem, well, hopefully you can see the pattern here. If we have parallel lines, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. So in this diagram here, angle 1 and angle 7 are alternate exterior angles. And if lines are parallel, they're congruent. And angle 2 and angle 8, and they are also congruent if we have parallel lines. And now let's look at the same side interior angles postulate. Well, the only one that's different is the same side interior angles postulate. And I remember this one because same has starts with the letter S, side starts with the letter S, and supplementary starts with the letter S. Yes, same side interior angles are supplementary if we have parallel lines. So in this case, angle 4 and angle 5 add up to 180. And the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 6 also equals 180. Now let's apply what we've learned. We're going to use properties of parallel lines to help us find angle measures and fill in the blanks. Well, let's say that we're just given that this angle here is 110. Well, taking something we've learned from previous chapters, we know that vertical angles are congruent. Well, I also know that we have a linear pair here, and a linear pair is supplementary, so 180 minus 110 would be 70, and then vertical angles are congruent. Now I'm going to take what we just learned to fill in all of these angles here. Well, we have parallel lines, so that means this angle here corresponds with this angle here, and corresponding angles are congruent. And this angle here is alternate exterior with this angle here, and alternate exterior angles are congruent. And now let's take this one right here. Well, this angle here corresponds with this angle here, and corresponding angles are congruent, or we could have done alternate interior angles are congruent. A lot of different ways to fill it in. There isn't one way to do it because now we just have so many different options. And then the last one, well, I'm just going to do vertical angles are congruent. And the last thing we're going to do is the alternate interior angles theorem proof. So let's say we're given that L is parallel to M, and we're trying to prove that angle 4 is congruent to angle 6. Well, let's take a look at our diagram, and let's talk about what we know. Well, we know that 4 and 3 are a linear pair, and that they're supplementary. But we also can add that these two angles right here, they are same side interior angles. Well, we just learned same side interior angles are supplementary. 
So those are the two things that we know and we're going to use those to develop our proof. The first thing we're going to do is have the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180 and we already talked about that. That's the definition of supplementary angles. And we also established that 3 and 6 are same side interior angles and the same side interior angles postulate says that they equal 180. Let's take a look at this right here. Both of these are equal to 180. So we are going to make them equal to each other. What was that? They're both equal to 180, therefore they are equal to each other. That would be the transitive property of equality. Now look, we have the measure of angle 3 on both sides of the equal sign. So let's subtract that and then we're left with the measure of angle 4 equals the measure of angle 6. But what we were trying to prove is that angle 4 is congruent to angle 6. We need to add that and that is just definition of congruent angles. This has been a lot of fun. I will see you guys in class.